you're still watching her moment, this is a show where we bring to you different females to come and maybe we can chat, we can discuss, we can you can get up close, get to know these females, uh, their life, their social life, besides their business, their professions. And well, today we are with Natalie Bitature. Yes, some of you must have just joined in, but I guess what? You're going to have what has been passed over the show when you get back to our social media handles. That's Africa TV Uganda on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Natalie Bitature is a woman entrepreneur. She's an innovator. She is a skilled financial advisor, I may say. <laughs> Well, and before we went for a break, um, okay, let me let me take it straight to your innovation. When did you? Because we've seen many or oh, a couple of your videos being like this. You cannot say motivation speaker, but and financial advisor, someone who has motivated very many people. Right? What? Where is the calling from? I mean, where, where, when do you wake up and be like, okay, I need to help these guys. These guys need to know this. These guys need to know when you start up this, you do this. When did you start this? And what, which calling from wherever says, oh, Natalie, you can do this? Um, I think I've always had a calling to be a teacher. That's the area oh. that I'm the most comfortable. And... It's the only other thing I ever wished I would do, and I still hope to do one day in my life. So I think it comes naturally for me. Also, I'm the firstborn in my family, and I have a lot of cousins. So I was always given more responsibility, and you have to look after the younger ones, and help them, and teach them, and be responsible to look after them. So I think it always came naturally. And also, my dad is a lot like this. He he really gives back a lot. He loves speaking to the youth. He loves giving people advice. When I worked with him, I never used to understand how... He has this thing which my mom calls clinic hour, <laughs> where he just meets random people who want appointments with him. He doesn't know what they wow, want, but he sits and listens to people, tries to help them, give them advice, connect them to people, give them ideas, and he's really happy to do it. And sometimes I'll be like, I'm so tired. How tired must he be? How does he still have energy for these things? This is not his work. This is not his day job, but he still has so much energy to give other people. So it was really inspiring to grow up seeing someone who does that. And it just became normal to me. You can't say, no, you don't have time to see someone. Find the time. Listen to them. Help them. It doesn't take anything from you. So it's one of the things that I was, made me encouraged to start doing videos. Because I don't have the ability to be as giving as him with my physical energy. I get really tired by the end of the day. I can't start doing one-on-one -on -one meetings with everyone. But also, I'm a millennial. So social media is how we communicate and how we interact and connect. So when I thought, someone asked me to help them up with something, and I did a video and sent it to them, and they're like, oh, this is really good, you should share this with other people, and I didn't really think much of it. But they shared it with their friends, and I got a lot of really good feedback, and they're like, you should give more of this stuff. And that's why, like I was saying earlier, I think when you're given opportunities and resources that you did not do anything to deserve, it's important to give back. So it doesn't take anything from me to make videos about something I've learned. Someone has taken the time to teach me or I've read a book about it or I learned it at school and give it out for free. The more people that know this, the better. Knowledge is free. It doesn't take it away from me. You can share it endlessly. So that's why I really love the videos because it's a way that I can give as my time allows, if I can plan and sit and film well, and think about it. Thousands without meeting them. <laughs> exactly. It's a, it's, it's a convenient way. It does take a lot of time and effort to film, I realize. <laughs> I learned the hard way. But it's worth it to me because I feel like you can't have all this locked up inside one person. It's not useful. It's not helpful. The more people have access to knowledge and tools and resources and links and videos, the better for them, which means the better for all of us. Well, apart from uh, your heart project, uh, doing that and work, what else do you do in your free time or in the weekends? Uh, I'm very close to my family, so I try to keep up as much as I can, go to their birthdays and events. I'm quite late all the time or miss some because of work. So when I can, I really try to be there and be there for them and be present in the moment. I really like music. That's an easy way for me to wind down or put it in the background and relax. I don't have much time for other hobbies. I like reading books and I like documentaries. I like learning. It's a habit. <laughs> well, besides people um, looking at you as this icon or someone uh, who is so authentic or someone who can give some uh, business or financial advice, uh, let's take it to your dad. 
Patrick Itatoye. How could you define your father? Ooh. I mean, yes, let's do it either way. <laughs> as a father and as a businessman. I don't think you can separate the two. <laughs> That's who my dad is. It's who he's always been since he was so young. So as a dad and as a businessman, he is the same kind of person. He is not the kind of person who treats someone in the office differently from how he treats someone at home. So he's very kind as a person, which I think can be dangerous in his position because he's very generous. He gives everyone his time. Sometimes I'm like, no, <laughs> we don't have time for this. Or this person is just going to stress you. And he's like, no, you have to give people time. And he's very strong. He's very smart. He's, he knows how to change gears so many times in a day. He reads so much. He listens so well. His brain is like a computer. I wish in, by the time I'm his age I can do what he can do. It's amazing how much he can remember and connect dots and think about things. Like, I feel like I've spent so much time with him. I always know what he's going to say before he says it, like when we're in meetings or something. But sometimes he'll be doing a video or be teaching something or doing a talk. And I also get like, caught up listening to what he's saying. And every time that happens, I'm like, wow, still learning from this guy which I'm always surprised by, but he, he has a wealth of knowledge. He listens and learns so much so fast, and he stores it, he keeps it in so well. So he's always so interesting to be around. Whenever we go on trips, I can spend days with him, and we never run out of things to talk about. I never run out of questions to ask him. He never runs out of answers, and it's always interesting. He's always so open to something new or to meet someone else, and I'm like, Daddy, this has nothing to do with what we're here for. This has nothing to do with anything we work in. Oh, it doesn't matter. Come on, we listen and we learn. And so you, you, I'm always learning from him. So it's such an interesting experience as a child and as an employee wow. to have someone like that leading you. So now besides uh, being, um, some people say that's favorite, are you? <laughs> I'm definitely not the favorite. I assure everyone. Well, I have a younger sister who gets away with everything. <laughs> I see. Well, other from be, you being the first, okay, you being the first one of the family, what are some of those responsibilities any girl could have or should have on their fingertips as a female in a family? Where well, some of those things really do, and you're like, I do this for my family, come rain, come sunshine, I get there. Well, it's always tricky for me because I'm a firstborn, but I'm also a girl. So my parents have two different approaches, and my mom's more traditional and thinks. I should know the things women should know. The role of women in the home, how to cook, how to clean, how to handle children, things like that. And my dad has never seen me as different from my brothers. So he expects me to know how to do maths very well and make financial projections and sit in a board meeting and be able to handle any meeting. He says he can't make it go and deal with it. So I've always had to try and overlap a bit of both. So what I found is I'm a good manager. So whether it's managing the office or managing the home, I know how to be organized, make sure everything gets done on time, everyone's needs are suited, whether it's planning something or organizing a trip or a birthday or a wedding, I try to get as involved as I can with my tight work schedule, but make sure that all the different stakeholders are being heard and their needs are being met and the project is working on time. Well, uh, with how you are profiled, someone can say she is so much of a businesswoman and when, uh, how many hours she have to sleep and if so how many hours should rightfully have any person in Uganda and with the world we are living in uh, with the you know unemployment and blah blah how should they think and you know be like okay this is the time I gotta sleep or oh, I have to be thinking about this differently ideally for starters how many hours do you go to bed this is a tricky question because I don't think I have healthy sleeping habits. I would not recommend the way I sleep to anyone else. What I say is people have to find what works for them. Everyone's body is different, so everyone's rhythm is different. You have to see how much time you need to sleep to be able to function at an optimum level. Some people, if they get less than 7 or 8 hours of sleep, they start to make mistakes. They say that doctors make the most mistakes in the afternoon because that's now when the fatigue is coming. Some people make life and death decisions when they're sleep deprived, they'll make the wrong decision. Other people, to be sleep deprived means they need less than four hours. So you have to find what works for you. Yeah. And I find different sleeping patterns can have a different effect on my body and the way that I'm able to work the next day. So I have to make sure I'm well rested enough to physically function, but also I can't sleep if I know I'm not doing something that I need to do. That stress would keep me awake. 
So I have to find a balance of knowing, okay, now I have to shut off the phone, I actually need to get some sleep, and also when it's okay, I'll sleep for the few hours tonight because I know I have to get this done today. That's a decision that I have to make, and it's a balance I've had to learn over the last few years. Well, you being uh, this outstanding female who has come out in the society to help a few females with whatever you, with the little you have, and uh, these last few minutes, who would love you to give? Oh, I can say she's a coach. <laughs> well, coach, you uh, uh, viewers would want to know, would love you to give them maybe three or four t- tips on how they can live their life, and most importantly, the females out there who are venturing into the business industry, who are financially, who think finances all the time. Someone who would want to be also be there and be like, okay, now she is a successful woman, you know, Forbes 2020. And someone, you know, who is much into business, what are, as a coach, what could be some of those take homes you would give to anyone watching them? So especially for women, mm-hmm. one, I think we should not differentiate women who think about finance and women who don't. Mm -hmm. All adults need to think about finance. It doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man. It's your life, it's your responsibility. You should not be passing that on to someone else. And it's also your freedom. So you need to understand your finances and your financial situation and be able to plan for yourself, be able to save, be able to make investment decisions. Any person should be able to do that. I think that it's it's a part of your freedom as an adult. It's your right to not whether you're a man or a woman or you're old or you're young. Once you cross 18, you need to be more responsible about your finance. I think something I like to encourage to girls and young women is you have to try it. No one is going to beg you to do something. No one is going to offer it to you and like put it on a silver plate here, have it. You have to try. You have to put yourself out there. You have to ask, ask for opportunities. If you have a business, you have to go out to customers and try to sell. Rejection should not scare you. Well, sure, Natalie, some some of the viewers would want to know why is it important for someone to brand themselves for their careers, for their professions? Personal branding is incredibly important because that's your reputation and that's how people know you in the industry and the market. So whether you're trying to brand yourself or your company, it's important that you're authentic and you are visible. You have to be able to get your message across as efficiently as possible. Don't waste people's time. Don't talk too much. Don't write long proposals. Don't use too many words. You need to get your message across quickly and in an impactful way. So you have to make sure that it's reflective of you because that's how people are going to know you in the market or in the industry. It's how you're going to build your brand. It's how you're going to build your career. And it's how people will come to know you and trust you and whether they can use you and your services in the future. Well, it's an honor and so privileged to be with her because it's those words that are going to give us direction, those words that are going to help us in our future financially if the women, we got to raise up, we got to get up and be on top of the game. Thank you so much. Uh, we're running out of time. Um, for now, I'm going to say bye-bye. Until next time, remember the repeat is on every Thursday from 10 to 11 p.m.